Hi everybody, I'm Byron Howard. I'm one of the directors on Zootopia, and today we're gonna learn how to draw Judy Hopps. When I think about Judy, I think she's very optimistic, very bright, very intelligent, very strong-willed, and uh, so, you know, she has a very bright features. So the first thing I do is I kind of create this kind of gumdrop shape because I love candy. I love food that is sugary. And so I create this little gumdrop shape. See, it looks a little bit like a gumdrop. Here's a gumdrop, for example. Kind of like that. So Judy has kind of a tall forehead like this, kind of wide cheeks like many, many rabbits. We looked at many real rabbits to design Judy, and we discovered they all have adorable cheeks, so we knew that had to be part of her. Uh, she, and then once you get this kind of gumdrop shape in place, I usually put the nose in there because the nose is a nice anchor point that tells me which way she's going to look. So Judy's looking down to the right, and then once I have the nose, then I can use that to kind of focus these lines that kind of determine where her eyes go. And her eyes, if you think about them as being a little almond shaped, it makes them feel like they kind of sit into her skull a little bit more, which is nice. These nice kind of lashes. And so again, you see again the very simple gumdrop shape, little tiny nose, nice big eyes. And then she has this cute little teeny tiny mouth that makes her just adorable. And Glen Keane, the great Glenn Keane, who did Ariel and the Beast, uh, and is a good friend of mine, taught me that to make a drawing of a mouth look really good, you put these little dark corners that kind of makes it feel like it's tucking back and shadowing it. So, and he was right. Glenn was right. He's always right. Anyway. <laughs> and uh, from that point, well, rabbits don't look like rabbits unless they have ears. And so usually what I do with the ears is I find this flow from the back of her head. Because you know, it feels good to... Uh, especially with Disney characters, to have that flow coming off of the, of the cranium, which goes like this, see, this nice big, big line, big relaxed swoop, and it's just coming right back off the jaw. And then if you just imagine that other ear being attached back there on the other side of her head, you can kind of knock that in back there. You can do it nice and rough like that. There's no pressure. Drawing is fun. It's relaxing. It's like meditation. You can just relax. And then, uh, usually, I do the same thing, I kind of flow off the front of her face, down into her neck, and into her collar. And again, if you can kind of just find these, uh, these flowing lines, finding these sort of flowing calligraphic lines, gives your drawing a nice grace and ties it all together really nicely. And you are welcome to shade Judy. She's a gray, gray rabbit, so if you'd like to shade her, shading is also nice. And then she has these sort of beautiful uh, dark ear tips right up there. So if you can do this, at parties, you will be so popular, and people will buy you things and be your friend. And then, uh, and usually when you do a drawing, you have to let people know who did it, so I'm Byron, so I'll sign this. Byron did this. There we go. Yeah, anyway, so this Judy helps. Just because you have it. Just because you have it up here, you can do. What you're seeing here is I've got a 2D animation desk set up. And this is what, uh, this is how I learned to animate. This is what, the same setup here was the same that they used uh, back in the 30s and the 40s when they were making the 2D films with Walt across the street. And it's all the same technology. It's just these little peg holes in the bottom of this paper. and it's. It was always great just to sit down and start moving the character's face around. It's like once you have a solid drawing of hops, then you can start to play around with her expressions and you can kind of start to squash and stretch things. And our CG animators do exactly the same thing. They start with a solid pose of hops in the computer and then they start building up their keys. And you can figure out how to make her kind of squinch and kind of get different expressions. She can look angry, happy, sad. But uh, that's the great thing, is that all of what we do at Disney, whether it's CG or drawn, has this great tradition of art that's been around at our studio for about almost like 100 years. And so and we, we love that. We love the, I love that tradition. I love the fact that every time I do another one of these films, the, uh, the women and men in our animation department teach me something new, and they keep getting better and better. Hello, Valerie here with a cool movie fact. 
Josh Hutcherson read the entire Hunger Games trilogy in five days to prepare for his role as Peter. For this and more movie facts, click on more videos. See you!